guys, it's Grace and Matt from the Everybody's Talking About Jamie fan page at jamie.musical. Today we've got a big treat for you. We're joined by John McCree who plays Jamie in Everybody's Talking About Jamie. <laughs> Were you able to have an input into the creation of Jamie you as a character in the workshop stages? Yes, I was. I was sort of the first, well, I was the first person to ever play the role. Um, the role was very different to how it is now, and it shape shifted a lot through the different workshops, and even from Sheffield to London, it changed massively. Um, and I mean, a lot of it came from when I, me, yes, but not just me. It all came from working with the other actors in the room. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of improvisation in rehearsals that sort of fed into the script. Um, that was for here as well. Um, so yeah, there was there was lots of my influence in the show, and actually even now there are certain things that I I can I can pinpoint myself what I what I put in myself that weren't lines, but said. I usually just um, cheekily put them in myself and then if someone says don't do that then I don't, but yeah. usually... <laughs> um, how did the experience of doing it in Sheffield differ to London? Sheffield audiences were a lot more raucous, actually. <laughs> People in down south were a lot more reserved, aren't yeah. they? Um, but they, they're watching their own community on stage so they're having a different visceral reaction to it than, than a lot of the people in London. And obviously there were huge sort of private, not private jokes, but very specific Sheffield jokes that we've kept in, but a lot of them just go over people's heads, like the snooker line. Obviously, yeah, they play the snooker at Sheffield yeah, yeah. every year, so that had a huge laugh, but over here, it's, just, it's not funny, but it's yeah, not. Yeah, you have to know the Yeah, it's not really the same reaction. Yeah. Except the tram. The tram, um, Parsons Cross, but they're still funny lines, it's just they were a lot funnier in Chippy. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're quite interested to know what is one piece of advice you would give to Leighton or any actor playing Jamie. Well, Leighton doesn't need any advice from me, <laughs> first of all. Um, I don't know if I'm equipped to give anybody any anything because my experience is so specific to me and you know, their, their experiences will be the same to them and they'll be working with different people than I have been and Leighton's ultimately telling a different story than I am because we are different human beings and I don't know how this actually works with them. I haven't had any conversations about it because it's none of my business but obviously as time goes on whether or not they keep it in the present day and certain pop culture things come into play that weren't mm -hmm. there when I was there but in terms of advice, I mean, the only advice I'd be able to give is like technical advice about sound mix and boring things like that, which which is I won't bore you. With. Yeah. Um, but Leighton's is such an amazing performer that he'll find his own rhythm. Yeah. I guess anyone can take on Jamie as they see it. Totally. And yeah. like, you know, if anybody had tried to give me any advice about it, I probably probably just would have gone straight yeah. straight off the back. I just you know, you've just got to learn on your own journey. I'm still learning now really? about it as I do it. I'm like, oh, that's, I think never thought about it like that before. And do you have that creative license that you can do it just anywhere? I think so, because once you know a show so well, I mean, it's amazing what the brain can do, honestly. When something goes wrong on stage and you're thinking about that, but you're still saying your own lines in a Sheffield accent, and you're also thinking about that person over there that's chewing gum and you can hear them really loudly. There's all these things happening all at once. Um, and because I know the show so well, it's like muscle memory, I can afford to change certain things in the moment that don't um, fuck up my rhythm. So do you feel like John is Jamie back in November 2017 is different? Totally different yeah. now. Um, there's a good reset button. You have to press every so often when you're like, Oh, I know what I'm doing really well, and then actually it's good to go back to stage stage one and be um, open to finding new things. Because sometimes you get into a rhythm and you can get quite dull. And then you go back, and if you try one thing slightly different, that kind of throws you off. Those new things come with that. But yeah, my Jamie's completely different every every day. 
I mean, maybe not progressing in a certain direction, but sometimes it's just, I just never know what's going to happen until, it all depends again how the actors you're working with feel on that day. If someone's got, had a, having a bad day and that's slightly seeped in a little bit, or a really great day, the energy that you're met with on stage is always different, so that can influence your performance, which is why it's so exciting yeah. to watch theatre, because you never, I mean, you guys have seen it so many times, have you noticed difference in Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's the small bits, like the odd line or your finale when you're in the doorway, mm. that changes. And I think that, that definitely has a new energy atmosphere. Yeah, the totally. I mean, speaking of your question about um, influencing stuff as well, that shush came from my first night literally having to shush the audience because otherwise I couldn't sing the end of the song. We hadn't yeah. discussed, I didn't think it was going to be like a big deal. And then it's become like, I guess, one of the iconic moments in the show and it's with the pictures. And, but it just, it was it was born from wanting to go home and <laughs> to tell the audience to, to chill out in the best way possible so that we could carry on. And it was like, who has the balls to tell the audience to be quiet? It's such a Jamie thing to do. Yeah. No, no, I don't know any other characters. That Is it the same for the Go On Love with Alex? Yeah. In yeah, that just happened one night, I think. That's dangerous as well, because sometimes I accidentally hit him in the tooth with the microphone. But yeah, that came, I probably just one night put it there as a joke and he went with it. You know, yeah. It's all born from, which is brilliant. It's so exciting. And as new cast members join as well, I mean, the dynamic must change a bit and the way you respond to the way they act as well. Yeah, I mean, because everyone's telling their own version of a story. Um, no one has been told that they have to do X, Y, and Z, and here's, you know, here's, you have to do exactly the same thing, which sometimes can be tough because when you're st when the story you've been telling for a year, and then someone comes in and they want to tell their own version of it, and you have to go, there are certain things that you have to respect within a piece that are unchangeable, um, but also there are certain things that become very exciting when you breathe new life into a relationship on stage. So it's a constant sort of tightrope that you have to walk. What, um, uh, what, what are you, this is kind of just a question that we get sometimes, what are your tattoos, if you don't mind saying? The, oh, okay, so that <laughs> is a Hans Christian Andersen quote. That's, that one long, that one there says, two unpathed waters are undreamed shores, which is from Winter's Tale, Shakespeare. Um, but someone thought it said, um, ungloved shoe, untrained horse. <laughs> So that's what I refer to as now. Um, I love shoe, untrained horse. That's the birthday of a loved one, which I don't think anyone ever sees. So I have a corset on. Well, a cinch up. And then that's an arrow, which is, have you guys seen Paris is Burning? No. Okay, shameful. <laughs> you. More you. I just feel like more you for some reason. I'm just picking right. you. You have to go watch it, because you'll really enjoy it, I think. Not that you won't. It's about ball culture. In and I'd enjoy ball culture. Why not? Bears? You know, the balls in America, yeah, like yeah, RuPaul's yeah. Drag Race and all that stuff. Oh, but not, I thought you meant balls. Not balls. Oh. No, it's not about, no, right. like, that would have been mean of me. No. Yeah. Um, it's about ball culture in 80s New York. Oh. And drag queens. It's a documentary, it's real, it's fabulous, it's amazing. And at the end of it, one of the, one of the people that sort of narrates his story he says at the very end, he says, you know, if you shoot an arrow real high and it, if you shoot an arrow and it goes real high, great for you. And it's just, to me, that seemed like such a lovely way of summing up life. It's just like, ultimately, you know, it gives a shit what you do. As long as you're happy, like, yeah. you can achieve the world. You can, I mean, you could become president of the United States and it'd still be a bit of a disaster. I mean, it's, you've just got to, you know, I, I, I read that as you've just got to have your own ambition. You can't do things for anybody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just such a lovely sort of um, queeny way of like summing up this entire film that I just watched. It was so inspiring and so sort of undercut it really well. Okay. And so that's why I got the tattoo of an arrow. I'll watch that now. You've sold You've got to, it's on Netflix, both of you have to watch it, it's great. And all the stuff that you see in RuPaul's Drag Race has come from there. Oh really? All of it. The library is open, they're all references from Paris is Burning. So you've got to watch it. <laughs> Okay, well then this is why I thought more you. Yeah. I watch every season. See, who's your favourite? Who's my favourite? The real question. Oh god. Oh, I like Juju B. Okay. Okay. Controversial. Is it? 
I mean, I'm more of a Trixie Mattel sort of person. Oh, myself. that's very. Um, more, yeah, I haven't yeah. really watched it so full on since. I can because I think there have been so many seasons now. I don't. Want to I don't know, but I know. Ju I know Juju B is like an old, yeah. old, older season. That's. I think it was, was probably my first experience with it. Which is mm. just, she's very funny. Yeah. You do the fan GP at the door sometimes. Oh yeah, I mean, how could you miss that though? That was. Yeah. I also did it at the Olivier's, but I think they cut my mic out by that did point you? as well. Yeah. <laughs> Shh. They know I'm a liability, so they just. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, what do you do in London? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean. I stay in my house, I cook, walk my dog, Winston. Um, it's all very, I live a very, very boring life. I think people have this idea that it's a lot more interesting than it is. I'm very content, very boring. I get coffee, I read the paper. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. appreciate nature. I do, I like a good walk. Um, that's why I got a dog, because I like walking. I'm just bored of doing it on my own. <laughs> Sad, isn't it? Do you ever see yourself working with everybody to talk about Jamie in the future in film or turning to the show in some form? I would love to take the show back to Sheffield for mm -hmm. a short run. I think if they ever did a UK tour and it just so happened to start in Sheffield, I'd like to do that one venue and then let somebody else do the rest. Um, I'm too old for the film, I think, probably. Um, but who's to say I can't be one of the drag queens in the background? I just like a nice little cameo. cameo. Mm -hmm. But that's not up to me. Um, and so yeah, I think Sheffield would be lovely. Mm -hmm. In years to come, what do you think will be the most defining memories from your experience? Uh, I mean, I think probably um, all the stuff that I'm taking away on a professional level about learning how I work in a rehearsal room learning how I work with other people, other actors, directors, writers, composers, bands, technical things like learning to work in this certain type of space, this theatre, um, versus Sheffield, which is a very different design, so it comes with its own complex um, differences. So I think all of those things, that all of, you know, my process, or my lack of process, really, I don't think I really have one, but I learned that on this job, I learned how I sort of go through the motions of things, you know. I'm constantly learning and changing, but I think those are the things that I'll take away from this experience, because this, I mean, I sort of did everything that there was to do with this one experience professionally. There was, you know, opening a show, creating a role, doing the whole awards thing, doing the cast album, going through constant cast changes and learning how how that can affect things. Cinema screening. Cinema screening, exactly. You never, and playing a real person, um, and having that person there, you know, it's all, it's all relative to this one job, which is, I think, usually you'd learn those things here, there, and everywhere, but I feel mm. like I've got a really good um, route now to sort of go and do other things. So those are the things that I'll take away from it, just all the, all the education I've had. I try to be like a sponge and just soak it all up. Working with other actors of Josie Walker's calibre, Mina Anwar, Shona Gulati, Tamsin Carroll, my God, Tamsin Carroll. You know, I've, I've been so lucky. And also the people, all the people that did it in the workshops that played those roles that, you know, that weren't in the show. It's just all, it's all been so informative. So. Those are the things I would take away and just keep very close to me. You mentioned um, doing like award shows and things like that. Do you find it different from your award shows or West End Live? Yeah, different I hate to it. Hit? <laughs> yeah, I don't like it How at come? all. I don't like doing things out of context. Just I, doing the one song. Just doing one song. I mean, and to an audience of people that you don't know whether they're, you know, that people have come to watch this show for a reason. They've taken an interest in it. I'm not like totally against publicising shows, I think it's a, you know, obviously it has to be done. But um, I just don't, I'm not a huge fan of the, and then usually, I'll be honest with you, the sound's usually terrible at those things. And that always comes with its own frustrations, because you're like, you come to stage and you're like, I, every time I did one of those things, I swear I'm never doing another one. And somehow you get roped into doing more, but, um, 
I just, uh, it's just not my preference. I, don't, I did enjoy the Olivier's because the band was amazing. Yeah, yeah like strings. And it looked. It was incredible. Amazing. But even then, that's such a huge building. It's just like, oh, I don't know. I'm interested to know, um, have you ever seen the show when you're not on? No. You've never seen it? No, never. I'd never spend time here if I wasn't no. going to go on. <laughs> also, I, I don't want to, I don't want to see, I don't want to see, I don't want to see the show. No. Um, no, I've never seen it. There's, they're doing a um, cast outing to the cinema screen. But I'm not going to go and watch that. You don't like watching yourself? No. I, what, no, not at all. Especially watching myself singing and, and, and doing all the crazy things I have to do in this show, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's hearing yourself, it's not even my voice, it's a lot higher. It's, um, no, I have not seen the show. Um, so most of our platform as the Joe community is based on social media. What are your opinions on it? Um, it's not for me. Short answer. Um, I don't like it. I I was I was on it at one point in my life when I was probably when f Facebook was first popular with my generation. I was on it. Um, I loved my MySpace. It was fun as well. But, um, I never had MySpace. You're too young. <laughs> um, but no, it's just I find it. I think it's such an interesting fine line between something that can make young people feel really, really good about themselves and also really, really terrible about themselves at the same time. I think it is a tool that some people use in a negative way um, and a tool that some people manage to use in a really, really positive way. Instant gratification, I think, is a dangerous thing. You know, posting a selfie, getting lots of likes. I also never, I never remember to take any photos of anything interesting, so mm -hmm. I would be useless on it. There'd never be anything interesting to look at. I've been to, you know, some wonderful places in my life, and never once did I get my phone out to take a picture because I always just forget. Um, but yeah, it's just not for me. But I do understand. The, I mean, I'm so grateful that you guys have all found a community that you really feel you belong to yeah. via social media. So it's such a double-edged sword, man. And I think um, I would just say to anyone approach with caution, <clears throat> be very careful about what you're letting seep into your subconscious every day. Do you, do you like stage door in the end? Yeah. <sighs> do I like it? Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I remember I got asked this question at, when I did the Olivier live thing and Carrie Hope Fletcher was oh, doing yeah, her yeah. thing and she asked me about, and because I'm aware that there is a conversation about it, but I have never felt like disrespected at stage door yeah. and I've never felt like attacked, I've never felt like I'm not like I'm not, I'm not Patty LePone, do you know what I mean? I'm not like I'm not I'm not trying to like elbow my way through people to get home. I always find people are very nice and polite and <clears throat> so it doesn't bother me. Yeah. I don't think it's part of my job. I don't feel pressure to do it. Like some days if I'm just like, you know what, I can't be asked, I'm not gonna do it. But I haven't had any of those days because my experiences at stage door have always been so nice. Yeah and simple, yeah. and an easy transaction between people saying I enjoyed the show, thank you for coming, sign a programme. I'm not a huge fan of the photos aspect of things. I don't mind <laughs> it, but I'm, it's just like, this is a relatively like, I remember when I was in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang when I was eight and no one really had a camera. Yeah. And there was still that lovely like, oh, I really enjoyed the show. And then, but what it, and this is another reason I'm not on social media, is that like someone, you're sweaty, you've just had a shower, you come out, you take a photo, and not only do you take the photo with the person, then but before you know it, you've got a ding on your phone, and you can see the photo that you're like in, and it's just, it's just that. Those are the, I don't love that bit of it, but also it's I, because I'm not having to look at them now. I don't yeah. just want me. Yeah. Yeah. As someone that's been to quite a few stage doors, I definitely understand when performers say it's irritating because. Really? You just get the phone in your face. It's not hi, how are you? Oh, well done. That's a shame. Yeah, I've never. I don't. Th I don't think that happens at this good. stage door. Maybe I'm not in the right show for that. I think because of the messages of this show, there's a lot. Of people go to stage door yeah. for more reasons. Just yeah, and I love people that turn up wearing, you know, the costumes. Yeah. That's great. Stuff like that. And actually, I think maybe I have worked in space. I think when you have a real big celebrity in a show, stage door can become a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. Because I know there are, I know there are people that turn up to stage door. That is like their job. They go there with like things to get signed so they can sell them. We obviously don't have that problem. Yeah. Um. So.
I just think if you know, if you can't, if you can't just enjoy that, like, what interaction that lasts for maybe, like, 15 minutes, then what's the point? Yeah. You know, and also I don't get the chance to speak to you on social media, so it is my one chance to sort of have a dialogue with you. Yeah, that's so no, true. Like, we've formed a relationship with the yeah. cast members purely for extended exactly. during this show. And you've always been very polite, so it's not a problem. You succeed. John, thank you so much for thank agreeing you. to do You're this. You're welcome. Do you have anything you'd like to say to any of the fans? No. Not <laughs> at all. No, oh. um, I think I've said it all. Yeah. Thanks for coming. I'm glad you enjoyed the show. Um, hopefully I'll see you all on the 26th of January. Yeah, there you we'll go. See, there. I'll see you then. That's going to be a really fun night, I think. I've got some special things planned. Exclusive. So, I haven't. I've got one. One. Thing. It's gonna get me into trouble. Well, I've really gone by then, so I can. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome.